is the subject of the video. It's what I call... You can see it. I have a crude sense of humour. But anyway. This is the spinning cube demo on the Arduino, which, ha which has the capability to be wired to composite output. Just beware with it. Here's the Arduino running it. It's Arduino Uno at the moment. It says you should put the video is sync pin 9 and the video output pin is 7. 50% of that is a fabrication. While sync pin is certainly digital pin 9, which is also PWM pin, the video signal pin is not actually 7, it's 8. So just keep that in mind. The site with the information does lie to you. So this is what led me on to eventually building this little widget for testing small little composite monitors because I salvaged them out of old video cameras and that. Retro Gamer VX has a nice VHS camcorder that I'd love to salvage that from. And so it's handy for testing things like that, or even these cheapy things you get off eBay just to make sure they work. They're usually NTSC and PAL compatible and you can run both on the monitor when it's monochrome anyway, it's just the colour that's wrong. Sometimes the H-Sync is also out. That's what led on to this, mobile phone battery, pretty much all scrap. But, the magic is, is what came on here, is the cube rotation is actually on this file. But if we try to compile it, watch what happens. It fails. On about a bazillion different statements. Now the cube rotation is... This section of code. That. And down the bottom here we have... This is more just text display on the cube. But even the print command is wrong because it should be print, I'll show you, string, str. So they just got print there, which is wrong. And then of course, in the actual void loop part, we actually have the rotational four loops that run the thing and operate randomly, or pseudo-randomly, because computers don't actually do random. Then we skip past all that, we've got more draw cube down here, but we've also got a whole load of rotate commands. And that's where it starts on the printing of the cube, and then that, this is all unused, unneeded code. So I had to cut and paste that into a default file, which did work with one of the demos. Cut along all the variables that it calls. Uh, to get the cube to display at all, there's, at the very bottom, it references white. Well, just white on its own set as an integer was no good. So I created an array in the hope that it would map to a colour map. As you can see that was successful, so once again another bit was wrong in the original code. So I had to declare it as an array, a little Google search does arrays in Arduino because although it is based on C, it's not exactly the same as C. So I had to declare an array. We had to change all the print strings to prints to string. We had to do numerous playing with the things. This is how you get custom text. Stick it in the four loops which cause it to rotate. And of course this, these are all one modified. I didn't need to touch these but this is more to do with the actual math behind it because you've got sine and cosine and it's comparing it to integer Q or float Q or whatever, there we go, float. And then this goes to defining more variables on the line drawing. And so I had to do it. It took quite a while because basically the process of this and also the process of this is pretty much, while I'm not the greatest programmer on earth, I am becoming quite good at reverse engineering other people's code and figuring out what everything does, at least to the point so I can grab the relevant parts to what I want to do and modify it to my own purposes as I have here. 
hence declaring arrays, obviously you need a certain degree of programming knowledge, which I have. Now a fun little note here is you'll notice there's NTSC and PAL. Now I don't know what this is about, but I think it has something to do with the timing crystals, because the Nano will only work with NTSC, and the Uno will only work with PAL. Now this is, that one's actually genuine, this one's a clone off eBay, and of course it's sold a little. Because this only outputs 3.6 volts, this needs 5 volts, ah, my XPSP external battery provided the step up circuit. Nice toggle switch, because I love these old style toggle switch. Composite connector from an old VHS. Hooray, old technology which goes in the bin. And so forth. These are about five quid off eBay. I need to order some more. But yeah, there wasn't actually a lot to do on the software. Which is always fun, but this is where it's declaring the size, for example. Part of it, what helps you reverse engineer it is things like C size. That's going to be declaring... And then you've got Z, which is Z axis, Y, which is Y axis, and somewhere, I don't know if it's in this, here we go, X, X axis, X, Y, Z, which declares your 3D variable. Then as we go down, this is that, this delays it, this isn't actually in milliseconds, this is not your standard Arduino delay, this is a custom delay, you'd have to look into the, uh, what is it, it's the tvout.h to see what that's all about. Then of course that's declaring locations on the screen. I believe it runs by pixel, so eight down, so each one of these is about eight pixels or seven pixels high. Then of course you always have the dot comma, which I think is called a semicolon, before you go to the next line. Just like that, and then you can do all that, destroy all humans, all your custom text, all that fun bit of uh, primitive humour that lasts about a second a hundred and then we get to that then we get to the for loops which actually cause it to spin and then we add in our, our custom thing which is once again you cut and paste from up there and edit the text we wanted it right in the top left corner so there's the text in the top left corner hey presto awesome but then I built this Let's show you this one working. It actually works on my main telly! And now, let the TV pick it up. we here. You can see the low resolution of the Arduino, and it can only do monochrome. But, it demonstrates the point that I now have a television. Now this is more flickery as well. You may be able to see that on the camera. Which is a bit annoying, but... It's good for testing little monitors. I'll test it on a few power only ones as well, see how they perform. If I even have any left, I'll see what I can dig out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thought that might be interesting for some of the more programming mind out there. If you want more details on how to reverse engineer uh, other people's programming, send me some messages and I'll give you some of my tips. And I'll make a video dedicated to it. Thanks for watching.